Well, you all sat down pretty fast. <laughs> Get, getting tired out there already or what? Um, now, Mac Moss, where are you, Mac? Okay, before you start telling me my sermon, give me a couple minutes of grace, okay? Because I got a few things to say. Uh, first of all, God bless you. Leslie, you're a breath of fresh air. Choir, that was absolutely amazing. I took a picture of you from the back. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we need to have a, you know, we had the blessing of backpacks and this kind of stuff. We actually need to have the blessing of electronics at some service, you know. Right? Now, five years ago, that would have been a joke, right? But you know it's true. All the ways that God uses what we have and who we are. Anyway, um, the other thing I want to say, then you can start timing me, Mac, is thank you to the members of the vestry of this church, past, present, and future, and for all the inspiration and for what is yet to be done. And to those young people that are here tonight, I'm looking around, seeing my young friends, and some of them I've known for a while. Some of them have been with me a long time. And I just want to say that your presence in this cathedral tonight fills my heart with joy. Uh, we used to do better than that now. Come on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Now, all right, let's see what I can do with this, eh? You know me, I'm looking for peripheral things to add all the time. The only person that's better at adding uh, soup to the pot while he's preaching is Brian Kendall. Anyway, Brian, I've trained you well. <laughs> or the other way around. And we do offer our thanksgiving for his ministry. Is it 60 years already? I mean, really? Where did that last 10 years go? I, I, I remember on our 50th year, we, we, we did this, right? Pretty much what we're doing now. And Bishop David was here, and I was probably back there poking fun at him or, or being emotional, one of the two. And, but how many of you remember that? You know? We looked forward. Yeah, see, that was an, it was an awesome time for us, right? We, we had this... this infusion of energy that had taken place in, in the cathedral because our lay people were just doing so much and we were we were in tune and, and there was a lot of young people and, 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 and it was just boom, boom, boom all the time. And George Joseph, you could play hopscotch then, you know, you had so much energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, we looked forward to the future with great hope, didn't we? We did. And I think what was formative for us back then, guys, and some of you guys were babies, you're not even born, was that we, we knew we were building on a history of St. Martin's, that we had a cycle here. And I was able to draw on that as director. Reverend Brian is doing it now. Um, people like Jim Reed and John Moss were part of the formation of that. And Bishop David, of course. But we always had this idea at St. Martin's that we had a cycle going on, we were building something. I remember Reverend Jim, Uncle Jim, I called him, telling me that when he got his paycheck after the hall was built, he used to go to the bank with his paycheck and wait because interest rates were so high on the building that we never knew if we had enough money to pay the bills. And he would wait to see if he could cash his check. So, you know, and, and but St. Martin's got that. They understood it and they, they accepted the challenges that resulted from their decisions, always did, and from their vision, and they stayed together, they believed in things, and they kept on doing it. They never gave up. That's the legacy of this church. They never gave up, believing and doing. And the leadership here in this church always took responsibility and initiative to make sure that always happened. Build, face the challenges, stay together, believe and do, and keep seeking God's will. That is what this church was known for. Our people, too, have always, in the history of this church for the past 60 years, every age, have always responded to good leadership. Good leadership. That's your legacy, my friends. 
And I know, <laughs> I know what you did for me. Huh? You wouldn't let go of me. So, thank you to the good people of St. Martin's. God bless you. So now here in this place, as your bishop, it's time for me to call you into reflection again. And so now I ask you, sisters and brothers, where's the energy? I'm asking you where it is. In your own life, in your own spirituality, in the ongoing life of this congregation. One of the biggest fears that I have as a bishop is that I'm going into parishes where I see how people still go to church on Sunday, but when they leave the building, the culture has disassembled the faith of community. Do you know what I mean by that? That we're not living church out there anymore. What are we doing in here to make sure when we go out there, we're still together? And so I ask you to think about that. How are you doing as individuals in your thinking? How in this church are the connections holding out between your rector and your vestry, between the vestry and the people, and the people and the community, between the community of faith and those who no longer believe, but who have a desperate need to know something? How are we doing with that? How is our connection with what we do here and what the Holy Spirit's calling us to do out there? And so I'm going to take a few more minutes of your time. I, I think I'm running in the red now, Mac, but you're still with me. I want to just go through a few scriptures with you. I'm going to ask you to consider... A brief quote first from Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Just a few, long, a few words. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Now, if I was preaching in a Pentecost church tonight, I'd get you to repeat it with me. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And nah, we're getting there. It's a great little story. Uh, the scenario takes place, some of you would be aware. I, I know Diane Saker, you, you, you would be aware of this because you love the Old Testament. Sheila, you would be aware of it. I know a few others would. During the period when the nation of Israel was divided, there was a kingship in the north and one in the south. And you know what division means, right? Division means war, right? Division means war. And so what, what we had was Israel and Aram, which now is called Syria, down in the south. And we move from Hosea, just keep that in mind, that little line, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And Second Kings 7 tells a story of how the Arameans had, had gone north, camped outside Samaria, and they were sieging the people in the city. So the people in the city had no food now, they had no water, they were dying of, 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 of hunger and thirst. And the story, this really cool story, guys, the, well, it's not a nice one, but it's cool. One woman said to the other woman, let's eat your son for supper, and tomorrow you can eat mine. That's, that's how desperate it was getting. And so, outside Samaria, the Arameans were camped way over there. Outside the city gates were a bunch of lepers, four of them. Four guys who weren't allowed in the city walls, obviously, because they were unclean. You know, they, they were the people, you know, Right? Anakins used to have lepers too, remember that, right? If you weren't baptized and you died, we buried the leper in the cemetery outside, remember that? If you got, had a baby and you weren't married, you weren't allowed to come to church, you had to have the baby baptized, you know, we, we did all that. Anyway, the lepers are outside. And they're dying too. They're probably worse off than the crowd in there. And so they said, well, what have we got to lose? This, this is agony. We're not courageous enough to kill each other. I said, we're going to go over there to the Aramean camp, and we're going to walk in, and we're going to ask for food. And if they feed us, awesome. And if they kill us, we're at peace. Now, what had happened in the night? 
He said, the Lord made the sound of a mighty army blown across the land and it frightened the daylights. Come on, you can smile. It's okay. Frightened the daylights out of the army. I said, you know what they did? They ran. They took off. They took off. And so when the lepers went there, all the food was there, all the gold was there, all the, all the silver was there, and they started eating and feasting, and they took all this great stuff and they started hiding it away, and all of a sudden they stopped and said, this is not good. We're wrong. We must go and share this good news with those people so that they can live too. People in Samaria were perishing because they had no knowledge of what God was doing. Proverbs 29, 18 says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no visioning, I say, the diocese, the church, the congregation will die. If we don't come together and think about what God is doing, and what God wants to do, we're done for. But God is not done. It's getting busy up there. The Spirit is moving everywhere. 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 So I'm going to just lay in the heart out here for you. This cathedral has some awesome people. Awesome people who have been consistently open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Awesome people who have been consistently responsible and responsive to the leadership of this church. And there are so many levels of leadership in this church, sometimes it's hard to keep track of them. Which is why you need, my brothers and sisters, to take care, to get connected, stay connected. Appreciate each other. Appreciate what every person is doing because God may be speaking to them in a different way than he's speaking to you and when it all comes together, it is going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Take care to talk, plan, and fail and then pick each other up. But do not retreat. Do not retreat. Do not give in to voices of negativity. Do not give in to, to declining numbers. There's something up with that. It's not just about you. It's about what God is doing in the world. People are still searching for God. We need visionary leadership, bravery, hard work, and we need to take some chances. Hosea says... My people perish for lack of knowledge. And so I say to the leaders, and the people of this church, and the people of our diocese, don't ever stop being students of the world around us. You guys, you teach me. Bishop John doesn't know everything. Trina, your work out there in the world, you teach me. Bonnie, you and that walker, your bravery, Wayne, your devotion. You teach us. Do you know what I'm saying? There's something in your life that God is doing with you that is not just for you. It's to teach the church, to change this world, to transform it by the power of love. And I'll tell you something. Not one of your opinions about what's going on out there matters. What matters is that you lay down your opinion and allow God's love to flow through you. Everybody. That's what we need a new knowledge of in the church. So don't let the bondage of religious human opinion quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. Don't stop the flow of love. Love. Ever. Let us be as lepers who have found this great treasure and somehow realize that we've been keeping it all to ourselves and say, this is not good. 
Oh, Lord, forgive me. I, I'm so filled with love and grace and hope. I don't want to keep it anymore. I need to give it away. Let's change the world. Because that's what God is calling us to do at St. Martin's Cathedral. Shall we pray? Father, in the history of the Anglican Church, we ruled the world. The idea that we were somehow superior and had greater knowledge has infused almost every country on this planet. How wonderful that is, that you have called us to be part of a culture, part of a heritage, and in this day and age, call us to repentance of who we have been with the promise of healing, a promise of a word of knowledge of who we are to become. Lord, I pray now for my sisters and brothers gathered here in this holy hour, in this holy place, to give thanks for what was and what is yet to be.